Hello everybody, what a marvelous day. Wow, oh, little pun there right in the beginning. Cheers to you. We are unboxing a brand new game and I'm telling you, the games industry is not stopping right now. They are saying like every game I'm interested in, let's release it in the beginning of September. Let's just push it there and totally bury that guy in gaming goodness. And all of them are huge time sinks and I have no idea what to do as if I'm not feeling stressed out enough for having to play all of these games and having so much fun. Yeah. First world problems, I'm having too much fun, God damn it! it's not happening. So we are unboxing Moon Factory 3, uh, special for the Switch, right here, in that box by AKTronic, who is the German publisher. I will just set you up on this tripod really quick. And I tested this out earlier. We're going to switch to the wide angle lens and make that happen because the package is just too damn big to fit in. We are here, like always, with our trusty pair of very, very dull scissors, but we're doing our best. This is, even though I ordered it on Amazon, shipped by AKTronic themselves. If you don't know, AKTronic is more of a like budget publisher. They usually grab the licenses to many games that, you know, have run their course and publishers don't want to keep them on store shelves, but then they pick them up and release them for a budget price. But they, they have some kind of deal with uh, Marvelous that they are publishing their games as well. So it's always a big back and forth, uh, like Amazon is not shipping them directly. Oh, that's a nice box, actually. All right, opening that up. What do we have here? Oh, I, I don't know. What are these called? I'm blanking on it right now, but we're getting a little patch for Wood Factory. I did not expect that. Uh, I didn't know there was some pre-order bonus or anything. So that that's nice, Akatronic. You're doing something well. Thank you very much. Packaging, let's see that we're not missing anything. Now I'm super, super careful. All right, big box. Well, slightly big package. It's the same size as all the other collector's editions. Can we switch over to the normal lens now? Oh, yeah. So. I thought it like would be a bit bigger or something because of the big box. I was worried that it wouldn't fit with the rest of my collection. But okay, let's let's use the normal lens now. And as always, I'm not prepared with a knife. So let's open this box up. As a huge fan of Rune Factory 4 Special, which is a game we never got. Rune Factory 3 we also never got in Europe. It was all US exclusive. We got Rune Factory 1 and 2. I only played one. I was super excited for it back in the day and I don't know. I couldn't get into it. So I never got into the rest of the series until they re-released Rune Factory 4 on the Switch. And I thought, okay, let's give it another try. And no joking, Rune Factory 4 is, I think, one of the best games I've ever played. It's right up my alley. It's dungeon crawler, farming, but it's also so well done. There's so much depth to all of it. And it's so much fun to play through. And I've heard that Rune Factory 3 is better than 4. This seems to be the fan favorite in the series. Now we released on the Switch. Let's see, what does it say on there? Um, Mysterious Transformation, Two Fantasy Lives, Rune Factory 3, I don't think that's supposed to make any sense. I honestly forgot what's in here. So let's check out the back. It's uh, an A3 poster. Like it, it's looking folded up, so useless to me. A5 notebook. I talked about this in my uh, other unboxings for um, the Harvest Moon games. I used to say, okay, like an empty notebook. No, for, for games like this, it's so much fun to take notes every day and like write about what you have done, especially in the Story of Seasons games. It's totally my thing and I'm in love with these art books and they're pretty high quality as well as uh, like a stationary nut who likes paper and ink and fountain pens. Um, I'm quite happy with these. Um, so we, we have some pin. Uh, I'm, oh no, the, the pins are this one. 
and uh, this is the the patch they have but it's not in the box did they forget to put it into the box wow <laughs> they, they, they seem to have forgotten to put it into the box okay and um we we get a, a bathing suit uh mode for the characters hmm. interesting in their bathing suits all year round interesting let's jump right in and see what we can do. I'm doing this off camera to, all right, the box is already dented up. Okay, let, let's get that stuff out. We have the notebook in like the, the nice autumn color orange. We have the poster. Let's do that later when I, I get the wide angle lens, lens back out. Rune Factory 3 Special Notebook. Let's see, do we have a calendar in the front? That was one of my favorites. No. And it's, hmm, it's a bit of a disappointment. Usually you get like little, um, a little bit of artwork for the characters in the corner, not, not in this one. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. This is like a, a bare bones notebook. Okay, that's a bit of a dis disappointment, I have to say. I was expecting at least to have the little character drawings in the corner. Watch my Pioneers of Olive Town or um, A Wonderful Life unboxings. I'll link them down in the comments. Then you can see the notebooks for the other games. But you know, I'm a bit disappointed disappointed in this. Uh, still quite good quality. The paper seems nice, but no artwork on this except for on the cover. All right. So not off to a good start <laughs> so far. Now we have a sticker sheet of characters. Nice little bonus, nice little bonus. Uh, the pins, come on, get out. Get out, little pins. Here we go, of a woolly and of the main character. I'm not sure if he has a name. I don't think I'll pin these to anything. So yeah, we'll just have a woolly. It must be some special woolly because he's slightly orange and he has a hat on. Maybe it's a special woolly, I'm not sure. And the game should be in here too. Here we go. Rune Factory 3 Special. Let's unbox this. Let's look at the back. All the, like, uh, probably townspeople, marriage candidates. I'm not sure if you can marry in this game. I, I would just assume you can. Because you can in every other game. I never did it in any of the Rune Factory games because it takes a long time compared to story of seasons it's you know you have to really work on it i think so i, I never gotten around to getting married in rune factory four or five even though i played both of these quite a bit no manual nothing just a nice little like cover in the background uh, it, it's blurry on the print it's not the case that's making it blurry and we have the cartridge. It's one on one of these smaller cartridges, make, which makes sense because it's a not even 3DS game, a DS game they, re they released. I'm not sure how, how much of a of a like remake this is, because I, I think they, they upped the quality to make it look a bit more like a 3DS game, so on par with Room Factory 4, even though the uh, DS version already had like pre-rendered backgrounds. So it already looked quite good, even though pixelated. So I'm not sure if they dug out the original files or if they AI upscaled everything. I'm not sure. So let's check that out later on. But we want to look at the poster first. So let's do poster time. Rune Factory 3 special. Let's get the wide angle lens back out. Here we go. A3 poster folded up. There's nothing on the back side. So that's it. I must say this collector's edition thing is quite pricey. The game itself launches at 40 euros, which I think is probably a pretty good deal. Uh, the Rune Factory games and Stereo Seasons games, they go, go on sale regularly, so you shouldn't have too much trouble if you're not into it right now, getting this one for a good price in the near future, for probably like 25, 30. I just saw Rune Factory 5 for 25 in stores. So you, you can find these games. They're not rare. They, they are printed into Oblivion, especially the Story of Seasons games. But these collector's editions, by the way, 
Obligatory note, I'm still looking for the archival edition of Rune Factory 4, the European version. If anyone sells that, I need that for my collection. Because so far, it's all complete. I have every collector's edition except for Rune Factory 4 now. So let us take a look. Let's switch back to the wide angle lens. I, th I think that would make it a bit easier to follow. So we have Rune Factory 3 over here. We have Rune Factory 5 over here. The Rune Factory 5 box is a little bit thicker. And uh, yeah, I think it had a music CD in there. So may maybe that's what makes it a bit thicker. We had A Wonderful Life, which was the latest Story of Seasons game that came out a couple of months ago. And here we have Pioneers of Olive Town. The only thing missing now is Rune Factory for Archival Edition. Like I said, contact me. I want that. I need it for my collection. I'm willing to pay the price because I know it's quite rare. It's hard to find. It was exclusive, I think, to the Marvelous store in the UK. So we never got it in Germany. And that's why I don't have it. So I want that. Tell me. I want to buy. I need it. Tell me. <laughs> I only I always have to re repeat that in every episode because maybe someone hears me out and wants to sell their archival edition to me. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice set. I like these collector's editions. They remind me a lot of the old PSP things. Let me get one of those out. Here, they remind me a lot of those old PSP collector's editions, like uh, the East collector's editions. Uh, they are a little bit bigger, but uh, I always enjoyed these because they don't stick out too much from other uh, from the normal collection. They still look like oh, it's a bit of a bigger box, but you, you don't need to make extra space for them anywhere. And I quite enjoy that. I can keep those with my regular collection and have fun with that. So I will now put everything back in. Oh yeah, as, as I said, uh, the collector's edition is quite pricey. I think it was 60 euros and the game launches for, um, the game launches for 40. So you're paying 20 euros for extra stuff. Or did I pay 70? I'm not sure. Let, let's research that right now because I know that I think for the content that's in here, it's way too expensive. They really overpriced those collector's editions Let's see, uh, Rune Factory 3 Special. Let's see what was the price. It's either, either so it's not, not for sale anymore. <laughs> it's currently unavailable. Let's see my order details, how much I paid. I, I know I paid a little bit less. Yes, I paid 65 euros for this. The price was 70. So you are paying an extra 30 euros for a folded up poster, uh, a few stickers, a patch, the, the pins, and an empty notebook. I think that's too expensive. I think they could have priced that way down. Maybe they needed to recoup some of the costs of offering the a Wonderful Life Special Edition for only 10 euros more, 50 euros. And yeah, I, I'm not sure. This was way too expensive. Maybe it's super limited. Uh, yeah, so it's 60 and it was five euros shipping because it's not shipped by Amazon. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure, AKTronic, I do not like the way they do business and yeah, not a big fan. So let me put this game into my Switch and after I've played a little bit, I will talk to you afterwards and give you my first impressions of Rune Factory 3 Special on the Nintendo Switch. Quick additional note, I just put them all next to each other and I realized there's no title on the spine. What the fuck are you doing? All right, let's take a quick look at some gameplay in Wound Factory 3 Special. As you can see, we're in our main town right now. There is, as far as I know, only one town if uh, Wound Factory 4 and 5 are anything to go by. So the concept is basically Harvest Moon style. You are an inhabitant of the population of, well, this town. I don't actually know the name of it. And right now, I've spent nine in-game days in the game. It's been like a week since I bought the game. I sadly don't have the time to really dedicate too much time to this right now. And the Wind Factory games are big time sinks. So if you start this game, expect to, you know, put, put 50 hours into it, at least, with all the farming things. So we have all the stores. I just want you to get an idea of what the town looks like. A huge uh, difference compared to 
Rune Factory 4, which mo was more of a like classical city kind of things, uh, like with a castle in the middle. This one is a lot more rural, and I must say I enjoy this one a lot more, at least stylistically, and the way it looks. So uh, down here we go to a dungeon, I'll show that to you later. Let's take a look at the farming aspect. So you live in this gigantic tree, and there's nothing in here right now. You can, you know, uh, put your crafting st stuff in here once you have unlocked and bought a few of them. Down here are your is your field where you can uh, plant things, and I'm doing that. And uh, I must say, like the it's just the right amount of complex. There's some complexity. There are levels to the crops. You can level them up by you know in increasing the fertility of the soil. You plant things. Um, this is your big field, so it's all unlocked from the beginning, basically. You can just plant as much as you want if you want it to be a simple farming simulator. This is the shipping box, so this is Harvest Moon Story of Seasons, the way you know it and love it. There are additional fields in the dungeons and so on, and I will show that to you uh, later on, actually, because it's getting pretty dark here, and I think it's time it's time to go to bed. So let's do this here. Yes, let's save the game. I don't have any animals yet, so I don't know how that works. If you get the ability to tame them at one point, I would highly imagine that's how it works. Uh, going by the other games four and five in the series I've played. So let's go to bed. I, because I have a Rune Factory four and five save on my Switch, I got additional costumes for the game. So I put the Wound Factory 5 costume onto my main character and I think it looks rather snazzy. So um, one little problem I have is like the menuing is not that great. There's a lot of going back and forth in menus, watering the crops. Again, this is like simplified compared to the Story of Seasons games that are really focused on farming so here yeah, it's it just the watering is very quick not very hard to do and planting just the same you go into the menu you have to see so yeah, i i got an extra pair of seeds which is level four now so your seeds just drop after you've harvested something and then you get higher uh, higher level seeds for things that cost more money produce that costs more money oh, i have three of these so let's actually plant those right now so I have all three filled in oh whoops I pressed the wrong button <laughs> little spoiler like at the end of the dungeon you get the ability to transform into a woolly because apparently you're some kind of human woolly hybrid so let's go yeah I, I don't have all the like button presses down just yet so I'm not as efficient as I could be. Let's water. All right, I think that's enough. I could pick all the herbs and everything from this field now and kind of, you know, make some money with that. But I want to show you the combat. And I must say, if you're a fan of, uh, you know, the, the older East games, for example, then this is the game for you. Like, you, you will enjoy this a lot. There are different weapons you can have. You... Uh, can level them all up separately. I would say the whole game is a lot more approachable, at least in my opinion. What is that? Can I dig that up? Can I do something? Oh, I got cursed by it or, or poisoned. That is not good. Do I have some anti-poison thing with me? I, I think this one, when I eat it, it will, yes, it cures my poison. So, okay, there's something uh, I don't know about yet. That's some mechanic I'm not familiar with. Let's get out my dual swords. I love these a lot. Uh, so a lot more approachable, but that may just be because I spent dozens of hours in Rune Factory 4 and 5. So I kind of understand the uh, leveling approach in that you have all these different skills. For example, Axe, Hammer is level zero for me right now because I don't use them too much. And Dual Blades is level 13, because I use them all the time for fighting. Now, how you level up, you can increase your level rather generically with experience points. So you see here, I'm level 9. But that doesn't really do much. 
You have to go through your skills and you see it down here. So by leveling X and Hammer, my max rune points and my strength increases. So if I want higher strength to do more damage, I need to level Xs. Uh, if I do this, uh, also strength. Um, so if you find you're not doing a lot of damage with your weapons, level a different type of weapon and your damage with your like main style of weapon should increase as well. Same with magic. You see when you use magic a lot, your uh, intelligent ma intelligence, magic defense and uh, magic attack increase. So that's a way to just level up rather quickly, like do, do everything a little bit and it should add up in the end. And then things like mining, like even, even mining gives you more HP and rune points and vitality. Fishing gives you more intelligence and max rune points, which means if you want to be a magician, you do want to do a lot of magic, you should level fishing as well. So go through your skills and see what you need to level. That's just my tip for getting into the Rune Factory games. And this is something I've only really understood and learned after finishing Rune Factory 4, which was like 50, 60 hours into the game. So this is just a like, professional tip for you that you may not know or understand at the beginning of the game. So right now we have some rain. So weather changes every now and then. Of course, you don't have to water your crops in the rain, things like that. The st typical story seasons Harvest Moon ideas are still here. These monster generators. Oh, what is that? I got some apple juice. All right, let's drink that. Uh, eating is another skill. So uh, like always eat. So if you have something to eat, eat. Don't save it. You want to level your eating skill. So by mining these things, I'm increasing my mining skills. And as we've learned, that increases my strength as well. So just keep leveling your different skills. Keep fishing, keep fighting, keep mining, keep crafting later on as well. And leveling should not be a big problem for you. This is the first dungeon. I, I found it rather confusing in Wind Factory 4. It was very easy to get lost, go into the wrong area and just get completely destroyed. Uh, I think this game is a lot more, I don't know, uh, maybe smaller and not as easy to get lost in because this was a DS game, whereas Wind Factory 4 was a 3DS game. So where's the other portal here? Always destroy the portal first. Otherwise the monsters will simply respawn forever. And you never have any peace and quiet in these dungeons. All your attacks uh, take rune points away. Once your rune points are depleted, it takes HP away. So be careful because you will pass out. And at least in Rune Factory 4, the money the uh, hospital took from you if you passed out was so high, it was just more economical to simply reload your last save. You can uh, save pretty frequ frequently at different save spots or at your home. So you cannot save freely, but safe spots are easy to come by. So let's go and defeat the first boss to get its item. You can defeat every boss every day. So everything respawns every day. So you can farm material for, for selling or for crafting later on once you've unlocked these skills. So let's save and go here. Yeah. Okay, maybe they don't respawn, uh, respawn every day, maybe every week, I'm not sure. I think in Rune Factory 5, they respawned every day. But they, they don't here. Hmm. That's pretty weird. I had not tried, like the, the, before I turned on the switch, like in my last place sitting, I, I cleared this dungeon and now the boss is gone. Hmm. Maybe they don't respawn every day in this game. I'm not sure. Uh, what's very nice is the return spell. Right here, it returns you outside of the dungeon without any wound point uh, cost. And if you press it again, it brings you back to your home. That saves a lot of time and it's just easier to get around. You can get a lot more done in your day. That's a pretty cool field here. I had not visited this area. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm not, I don't know if this is important later on in the story but it probably is. 
So that's just my first impressions of Rune Factory 3. I like it a lot. I uh, would say I prefer it over Rune Factory 4 so far, at least aesthetically and the way the, the game is structured and laid out. And I would probably recommend this as a, as a starter game in the series. Because I'm not going to lie, I was pretty overwhelmed with Rune Factory 4 when it first came out and when I first played it. So it, it's not the most beginner-friendly game. I feel this one is more beginner-friendly, but I'm, it's hard to say because I'm not playing it for the first time. So I, I already have experience with the series. So yeah, I, I would recommend this. It's lots of fun so far. I am, I don't know, five hours in right now. And you know, it's, it's repetitive to a certain extent because you're farming, you have to go through the years. And uh, I, I can't wait to have the time and just mental energy to commit into a big game like this in the near future. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I see you in the next video. Play Song Moon Factory. Did you get the game? Did you enjoy it? Have you tried it out? See you in the next video.